Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my Ramadan bulk food prep 2022. It is that time of year again where I like to bulk cook and prepare things for Ramadan so that I am not stressing out about cooking, about what to make for the children, what to eat myself, for iftar. So I do little things to help myself in the future. So here I am, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make all of these wonderful preps to make your life a little bit easier including recipes so this video is jam packed with a lot of delicious recipes so make sure you keep watching to see how i make samosas using parathas yes you heard that right paratha samosas that i'm going to be cooking in my air fryer by the way not frying we're going to keep it healthy this year and i'm making these delicious meatballs which you can have so many different ways but anyway let's get into it we are going to start with prepping the onion so instead of making onion gravy i like to make my onion prep like this i use onions in almost every single dish that i cook who else is like that let me know in the comments so this is roughly about a bag of onions and then we peel a lot of garlic i'm going to be making fresh garlic and ginger paste i do not like the stuff that comes out of a jar you always taste really really acidity and less flavor so here we have prepped our onions our garlic ginger and i'm going to be using my ninja blender which is fantastic by the way i do not want to blend these onions to a paste it looks like you've chopped up the onions it doesn't look like you've blended it to a paste so this is how i like it and in the end i didn't even need to chop it up in halves to get it like this. I could just chuck the entire thing. This is how amazing this blender is. And oh my goodness, you cannot run away from the tears that these onions produce. I've tried putting glasses on, I've tried all the methods that are supposed to not make you cry, but it doesn't work for me. So anyway, I've put the onions in their hole and this is what I like. I always use chopped up onions and then we're going to put those in Ziploc bags. I like to do this, flatten it out, put it in the freezer and then break it up little by little and use it when I need it, which isn't every single meal if I'm honest. And because I've thinned it out so much, it actually helps in freezer space. So always flatten everything out as thinly as possible to save yourself some freezer space. And then I'm going to put some oil in some pans, let that heat up, go back to my blending. I'm going to be doing my ginger and garlic at this point. You do not have to mix them together. I just always cook with ginger garlic. You can always do your own garlic separately and the ginger separately, which I think I will next time actually. So in the mixture, I've only added in lemon juice and olive oil. I'm blitzing that and then I realized still wasn't the consistency that I wanted so I went ahead and added more lemon juice and olive oil till I got to my desired consistency which is a little bit like this it's not too thick it's not too thin it's not very watery it's just the right consistency so I'm going to put those in small ziploc bags and leave some aside for the dishes I'm about to cook and then I'm going to freeze them so we're about to get started with the fun bit, the cooking. So I'm going to make the spaghetti slash lasagna sauce in one pot and in the other pan I'm going to be making the samosa filling and we're going to be making our filling using tuna. I've never done it with tuna before but there's a first time for everything. And this is the amount of ginger garlic paste I've managed to get from the mixture which is a lot. Now I'm going to add my beef mince into the pot, break it up. You want to break it up real good so that you don't have big lumps of meat unless you like it like that i do not i like my mince to be really really fine so i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna go and refill all my spice pots because that's what i do very last minute <laughs> so in the mince meat mixture i spice it up using paprika coriander powder a little bit of cumin i literally eyeball everything and this here is all spice from costco which is so tasty i think it's called all spice and here I've got Worcestershire sauce, something that I struggle to say. <laughs> and here's what I'm talking about. You don't want the really big lumps of meat. So I keep breaking it up until I have it right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and break some chicken stock on there. If you have Maggie, use that, I run out of it. So whilst that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomatoes into that blender that I had in the ginger garlic paste. Just so you can have all that flavor. I 
I've already added some ginger garlic paste, I believe, into the onions earlier. Once that's all in, I mix it all up, pop the lid on and let it cook away for about 45 minutes. I did forget to show you guys that I actually added in coriander. I've also added in a lot of tomato puree before I close the lid. So whilst that's cooking away, we're going to move on and make our samosa filling using tuna. I've never done this before, but I've always had samosa with tuna fillings and it was always so tasty. We started off with our onions that have sauteed really nicely. I added in some ginger garlic paste. Now I'm gonna be chopping up some green chilies to add to this little blender. Just leave it to the side, chop up some green onions or should I say spring onions. I like to call them green onions. Wash them really well because they hold a lot of sand. Once that's fully washed, add in your green chilies, add in your green onions or spring onions. Mix it all up together and you will be ready to add in your tuna. I added two cans of tuna here and I used tuna in sunflower oil. Ideally, I should have just used the oil that it came with, but I didn't. And I've added in some Cajun seasoning, some turmeric, black pepper, a bit of paprika, and once again, I eyeball everything, as well as some dry coriander. Then mix it all up and taste it. Keep tasting it for salt, for pepper, for extra seasoning that you might need. And once you're at this point and it's cooked a little bit, I added in a lot of lemon juice, depending on how you like the taste of it keep tasting it because obviously the tuna's cooked is not raw and you want to keep breaking it up so that the tuna flakes is coated in the seasoning or the seasoning is coating the tuna whatever makes sense in your head and now we're going to chop up a bunch of coriander to add to all the different dishes that we're going to be making for today including the stalk i used to chuck a lot of the stalk away now i use most of it and here is the rookie mistake I made. I did not wash the coriander before I started chopping it, but this little colander thing is fantastic. So it didn't like leak coriander everywhere. Now I've added in my coriander to the tuna filling, tasted it, tasted 10 out of 10, and I'm gonna leave it to cool down before I put it into the paratha. So what you do is let your paratha defrost, okay? And then cut it in half and basically do what? he's doing here. You don't even need any milk, you just press it down till it sticks and now you have your perfect samosa thingy, whatever it's called, <laughs> and now you just fill it in. It is so easy and I cannot believe I've never tried this before, definitely recommend it. We're going to cook it in the air fryer, just brush on some egg wash or what I like to do is brush on some milk wash, which I prefer so much more. I don't like the smell of eggs. Anyone else like me? or am I just the weird one? <laughs> so you don't want to overfill it. Just put a little bit in and then use a fork to close the edges. And when you're about to cook it, brush the milk or the egg and put it in the oven or fry it if you want. I think it'll taste much nicer if you fry it. And now we're going to go ahead and make our white sauce or the roux, whatever you like to call it for the lasagna. It is so, so easy to make. I cannot believe I once upon a time used to buy this in the jar which did not taste that great so you just add in a big blob of butter ideally you need to add the same amount of butter to the flour ratio so yeah mix it all up let it cook longer than my husband did because you need your flour to cook otherwise you'll taste the taste of flouriness i don't know how to explain it but yeah you want to let the flour cook a bit more so keep adding water I mean water, milk, a tiny bit at a time until you get your desired like consistency. You don't want it too thick or too thin. And then he's added in some salt, some black pepper and he's going to add in some mustard. Just a tiny bit of mustard, it gives it such a nice flavour. As well as some ground nutmeg, just a dash of that. And once all that's added in, add in your cheeses. I like to add three types of cheeses, red Leicester. Um, cheddar cheese and mozzarella and once that's done we leave it to the side and now we're moving on to the very final dish I think it is and that is my very famous it's not mine it's actually my best friend's mother's recipe she taught it to me in a blender you just add in onion and green chilies 
blend that up and you actually want to blend this to a paste this time and not like tiny bits of onions and then I like to put it in a sieve and get rid of all the water in the onion. So just keep pressing it down until you have a very dry mixture of onion and green chilies. I've remembered that I actually need some more coriander so I'm gonna chop it up. I've actually remembered to wash it first. I don't like to add all the coriander in this blender. This blender isn't as powerful as the other one so it doesn't blend very well if you don't chop it up lightly otherwise the stalk gets caught in that circle thing which is a nightmare so i just gone ahead did that blended it all up i forgot to actually blend the coriander with the onion so remember to do that then you won't have to do this um, i'm gonna get rid of more liquid and then we are ready for the next step so this is the mixture one part of it now i have my chicken thighs so i've actually washed cut up as much fat off the chicken thigh as I could. You do not have to do this, but I'm very extra. I like my meat to be very clean. And then I'm gonna blend it up. I could just get the chicken thigh mixture like this from the butchers, but honestly, I'll pick out all the fat one by one and I'll be there all day. <laughs> so I just rather do it myself. And yeah, I've popped it in a bowl and I'm gonna add the rest of the mixture in. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our seasoning, mix it all up and make your meatballs. So the seasoning that you're gonna need for this is just some coriander powder. Again, eyeball it depending on the amount of meat you have. We have some oregano, some cumin, then I added in some parsley, some salt, some pepper. I don't think I had garam masala with me at this point. If you do, add that in. And Liana wanted to get involved, so I let her add in the ginger garlic paste. But if you didn't make ginger garlic paste, then blend up the onion, green chili, um, coriander and ginger garlic paste in your mixture. But you want it to be smooth and not bitsy either. So that's why I like to do it separately. And in the meantime, I'm gonna just clean up, sanitize everything and then come back to make the meatballs. I do not like cooking in like messy or dirty surfaces. It gives me a headache and I can't concentrate and I'll just give up. And I noticed these two being so cute towards each other, which at the moment, doesn't happen very often. They're constantly bickering, fighting. I know, a three-year-old and a eight-year-old bickering and fighting constantly. So I had to record this moment <laughs> and enjoy it while I could. So this is what the mince mixture looks like once all the spices have been incorporated, mixed really, really well. You really need to mix this in for a while, maybe two, three minutes, because I can see some like turmeric there still. So I've gone ahead and mixed it some more. And then I've got myself a tray with some foil on top. I've got two of these actually because this mixture made a lot. I don't like my meatballs really, really big. So I make them tiny. When I tell you it's tiny, tiny, tiny miniature size. So this is how I made it. And actually I went smaller than this that you see right here. Just sped it all up. And yeah, that is the meatballs done. You can have this in so many different ways, guys. I've had it in a curry once before, if you watch back in my vlogs. I'll actually link the vlog in the description box below where I cooked a nice meatball curry with chickpeas using this exact recipe for the meatballs. And you drop it into the curry. I can show you when I make it again in Ramadan, during Ramadan Fiftar, when I make it, inshallah, if you want to see that but the sauce was so simple and delicious. Yeah, like I said, you can have this in so many different ways. You can put it in the air fryer and just have it as a meatball sub, have it with some rice on the side. You can really actually cook this in a healthy, healthy way. Pan fry it, oven it, whatever you want. Put it in a skewer, make it into like a kebab. Barbecue it. It's so, so versatile, so tasty and very, very healthy. So. I think this is really, really worth making. It freezes well, and you can just take it out, dash this in a bolognese sauce, cook some spaghetti, mix it all up. You have a nice, delicious, healthy dinner for the kids or for yourself. We tend to just eat like we do every single day for dinner, and that's why you tend not to see a lot of fried food prep here. Apart from the tuna samosa, we wouldn't be eating anything else. This is all that we eat, everyday food. <laughs> Once all the meatballs are done, I go ahead and freeze this lot. You wanna freeze it separately. If you dash it all together, it will just clump up and you'll have a really hard time breaking it apart. It'll fall apart, basically. So once it's all frozen, this is what it looks like. 
just pick it apart one by one it's actually quite satisfying to do <laughs> and then you're ready to just put it all in a ziploc bag and freeze it let it touch whatever you want stick together at this point so i did that for both batches and froze it so this is actually all the meatballs that i got from the mixture that i made earlier which isn't a lot if you look at it in the screen but in real life this is more than enough for us i don't tend to eat this a lot maybe like maybe this would make two meals for us should have probably made more Here we're just about to finish off our lasagna and assemble it all together. I've bought these takeaway tins from the pound shop or is it B&M? I don't know where I bought it from but they're so handy and one of these feeds both of my kids and these are the three cheeses that I use. Mozzarella, Red Leicester and cheddar and this is the lasagna that I like to use. absolutely love it. I got it from you can also get it from Tesco. It is fresh lasagna and it's so good because it cooks a lot quicker than the dry one. You can also cut it with scissors to fit whatever shape you've got, which is amazing. And you can find it in the fridge sections of the supermarket. It's honestly a game changer. If you love making lasagna, try these sheets. You'll never go back to the dry ones ever again. So this concludes our meal prep. We have now made all of this it doesn't seem like a lot but we have some of the samosas we have the meatballs we have um the garlic ginger garlic paste we have the lasagnas and we have some leftover sauces of the bolognese that we will freeze and cook some spaghetti for the kids whenever they need and these lasagnas are mainly for the kids guys you know the days that we can't be bothered to cook because you're fasting we dash it in the oven and half of it is for liana half of it is for malik so you need to freeze these samosas separately again and then once it's all frozen put it in a ziploc bag freeze it and you're ready and this is our mini ramadan prep all done i'm so glad we managed to get this out of the way you can hear liana in the background screaming so i'm gonna go tend to her thank you guys so much for watching our ramadan meal prep 2022 and i'll see you in the ramadan vlogs take care